Hey everybody, Ryan Jackson here. Hope you're having a great day. So we're going to talk about two different code changes in this video, both in Article 120 for load calculations, formerly 220, uh, because really one of these two changes would not make any sense whatsoever without also knowing the other change that was part of it. These two very much come as a package deal. And in fact, there's one other change that's also a part of this package uh, in 120.83 that I'll just kind of mention here uh, towards the end. But the bottom line here is I think you're really going to like this change if you do residential. If you don't do residential, you might as well just skip this video. Uh, but if you do residential, this is really a nice change. And I think you're going to like it. Let's take a peek at what it has to say. All right, so Article 120, Branch Circuit Feeder Service Load Calculations. We're going to go in reverse order. We're going to talk about 120.13, but we got to talk about 120.13. 41 first, otherwise the change to 120.13 is not going to make any sense at all. So here's the deal. The lighting and general purpose load calculations for dwelling units were reduced by 33%. Great. Uh, exactly what it sounds like, right? We, we dropped the load calculation for dwelling units. We reduced it. I won't say we dropped it. I mean, it's not gone. Um, but you might remember back in, I think it was the 2017, no, it was the 2020 code. They went through and they reduced a bunch of the lighting load calculations for all different occupancies throughout the NEC, except for dwelling units. And the reason for that is when they went through and they did all those load calculations, the, the task group basically said, look, it's a, it's a two-year window here, and, and really it's more like a one-year window when we're doing the code revision process. You basically have a year to figure out how to handle the issue of load calculations. And the task group that was responsible for it, that, that I think did a fantastic job, they basically said, listen, we're either going to do residential or we're going to do everything else. And they decided to do everything else first. Okay, so 2020, they tackled uh, all things residential, right, or non non residential, reduced the lighting load significantly because let's be serious. When's the last time you installed a 400 watt metal halide? I mean, sure, they're still out there, but not like it was back when I was installing. And we're certainly not installing, you know, 60 and 75 watt incandescent lamps. So it's high time that we reduce the load calculations. So they did that for the 2020 code. For the 2023, uh, they really didn't do anything as far as the load calculations go. I'm not sure if that was because of COVID and just how much more difficult it was to change the 2023 code. But the bottom line is here for the 2026, we went through and we addressed dwelling units. And I think you're definitely going to like what we did. So here's what it says. Dwelling units are now calculated at 2 volt amps per square foot, which of course it's been 3 for decades. I, I don't even know how long, 50, 70 years. Uh, 2 VA per square foot, which includes your receptacles and your lighting outlets in 120.41, 1 through 3. Motors rated less than an eighth horsepower are also included if connected, if connected to a lighting circuit. Uh, let me hit that last sentence here before I forget to. Uh, you have a ceiling fan, right, in your house. Do we really have to consider that a motor and do some sort of motor calculation? No, it, it, it's less than an eighth horsepower. It's connected to a lighting circuit. Just call that part of your 2VA per square foot. Uh, you have an exhaust fan in your bathroom. Is that a motor? Sure. Do you have to do a motor calculation? Of course not. It's, it's less than an eighth horsepower included in your lighting circuit. You're good. So 2VA per square foot, that does your lighting in the dwelling and the receptacles in one through three. Now those receptacles would be any 15 or 20 amp general use receptacle outlet, including those in bathrooms and garages. Okay, so all the receptacles in the house is part of your three, your two <laughs> VA per square foot, right? Now I say all receptacles. Well, the small appliance branch circuits kind of have their own thing. The laundry has its own thing, right? But generally speaking, all your receptacles, you don't have to do any additional load calculation. Your lights, it's all part of the 2 VA per square foot. That also includes the outdoor garage accessory buildings and basement receptacles covered in 210.52 E and G. So yeah, don't worry about your outdoor receptacles. You don't need to add that. You don't need to do anything for your garage receptacles. That's all part of the 2 VA per square foot. Don't worry about that. 
And then item three, the lighting outlets included in 210.70, right? So all the lights is part of the two VA per square foot. And then as we mentioned earlier, the floor area is based on the measurements covered in 120.5C, which is to say you use the outside dimensions, you don't count crawl spaces, you do count attached garage, you do count unfinished basements, you do not count uh, uh, detached accessory buildings. Uh, and that leaves a little bit of a black hole in the code, I'll be honest here. There's almost a kind of a contradiction here because you don't count outdoor garages as part of the dwelling unit load, but this section right here says, yeah, accessory building receptacles are part of the two VA per square foot, but there is no square foot because you don't measure square foot of a detached building. Remember that 120.5C. Uh, before I forget, it, we, I talked about this last week. I was in uh, Nebraska, you know, covering this topic, and it, it's it's a little bit of a problem when you're doing the calculation for the dwelling unit itself right because that's not part of the dwelling unit. i'm looking at that picture there that is not part of the dwelling unit that is a detached garage the dwelling unit you're going to calculate it at two va per square foot and that includes the receptacles in the garage when you go to calculate this thing which is not part of the dwelling unit you're going to have to do a load calculation right you're going to run power there you have to do a load calculation so when you run the feeder circuit out to there it's going to have its own load calculation and the receptacles out there and the lighting out there kind of a black hole in the code right now. Personally, because I, I think it says you don't count the lighting, but you do count the receptacles, but you don't count it at all. Here, here's what I would do because I think the code's broken. I'm gonna measure that out at two VA per square foot and that's gonna include the receptacles. That's what I would do. Uh, if you disagree, that's okay. But I think that's what I would do because I think the code is, is a little bit broken here. And it happens, man. We make big sweeping changes in the code things get overlooked. It happens. We'll fix it in the 2029. As we mentioned, motors rated less than an eighth horse that are connected to a lighting circuit don't require any additional load calculations. You, know, you don't have to worry about the fan motor. Just It's fan to light. Just call it part of the 2VA. Okay, the other thing that changed, 120.41, we reduced the load calculation down to 2VA. Before I forget, in the optional method, 120.83, you know, we've done for, for decades, we've said, okay, take your first 10,000 VA at 100%, the remainder at 40%. They changed that to say you're going to take the first 8,000 VA at 100% and then, uh, and then take the rest at 40%. So there's 2,000 uh, VA difference. And when you look at that, that might bother you because you might think, oh, well, that negates the whole change from three to two. Uh, it really doesn't. If you actually go through and calculate one, this will result in a lower load calculation. The other thing that happened, 120.13, and this ties in with it, a different calculation, but don't sweat this. <laughs> right off the bat, you're like, oh, God, a new calculation. Okay, different calculation for the minimum number of dwelling unit branch circuits was added. This will make perfect sense, even though it might not when you first read it. Dwelling units must be calculated at 3 VA per square foot for determining the minimum number of branch circuits. I know, I know, it's like, well, we do 2 VA for the load calculation. Listen, I know. But have you ever actually calculated the minimum number of circuits for a house? It is shockingly low. All right, so for this 1,800 square foot dwelling, you basically need to have three 15 amp circuits for all the circuits, for all the lights and all the receptacles, other than, you know, the small appliance, the laundry, the bathroom, and the garage. Three circuits for the whole house. We're not going to decrease that down to two, <laughs> right? So that's calculated at three. So we were, no, nobody agreed that we should be delete, you know, revising this down to two VA. So for the number of branch circuits required, you're still going to calculate it at three. But for the actual service load, the feeder load, you're going to calculate it at 2 VA per square foot instead of 3 VA per square foot. All right, so I know that was a lot of sections, 120.41, 120.13, 120.83. Well, you know, it all works together, right? That's one of the tricky things about Article 120 is you don't just get to read one sentence and, and that's your load calculation. 
right? You got to use the whole article. That's just that's just the nature of load calculations. So uh, if you find yourself using a spreadsheet like a lot of us do, you're going to have to tweak your spreadsheet, right? You're going to have to change the formula from uh, 3VA to 2VA. You're going to have to change the, your uh, optional method from uh, 10 to 8, like we mentioned. Uh, and then for the purposes of the minimum branch circuits required, I'm just going to say it. Listen, I don't normally say this. I don't. Um, man, if you're installing the minimum number of branch circuits for a house, uh, kind of shame on you. <laughs> I mean, seriously, man. Come on. Three circuits for the whole house of lighting and receptacles? I mean, come on. So don't be putting in the code minimum number of circuits in a house. And that's not something I say very often. All right. So anyway, there you go. There's the big changes to residential load calculations. I told you you'd be happy with it, and I, I think you have to be, right? We decreased it. It just makes everybody's life easier. We will see you on the next video where we're going to cover a, a pretty significant change, I think, for other than dwelling units. So I told you guys, if you don't do residential, eh, this one's kind of nothing. If you do commercial, this one is a big one coming up in 120.56. So we'll see you then. Hope you enjoyed the video. Be safe out there.